Now we're going to turn to my guest this morning, or this afternoon, sorry, Philip Ingram's favourite topic of the day. No, not Gaza, not Ukraine, not security threats, but menopause. Well, I want the manopause. You want the manopause. Exactly. There are going to be complaints. Well, I'm complaining. <laughs> you know, I'm, so, I'm sorry. If we're going for equality, if there's a menopause, I want a menopause. I mean, to be fair, the hormones on you boys, I mean, goodness me, are we allowed to say that? I don't think we're allowed to make any jokes about any of this stuff anymore. <laughs> well, the reason we're talking about the menopause isn't because I'm a 55-year-old woman. It's because employers could be breaking the law if they don't make allowances for menopausal women suffering from hot flushes and many other symptoms under new guidelines that have been issued by the Equality and Human Rights Commission today. Well, joining me right now is Kate Usher. She is a menopause and gender equity consultant at the uh, Menopause in Business organisation. Good morning. Oh, I'm going to say it's not morning. Good afternoon to you. Uh, <laughs> thanks for joining us, um, Kate. Um, do you think do you think bosses, employers should have to range their offices, set the heating, allow days off and all the things which has been suggested by the Equalities Watchdog for women going through completely normal, natural hormonal changes? Um, I think that uh, a lot of organisations are already doing a lot of what's being discussed in the headlines today. They are already providing many of the adjustments. Um, so in that sense, we all know that some areas in offices or places of work are warmer than others. They're cooler in places, whether that's through solar gain or through the heating. Then there's no issue in allowing women to sit in certain areas where it's cooler in for, for those who are having hot flushes and for those who may wish it to be warmer, maybe they're having cold flushes because that's the thing too, that they can sit in the warmer spots. So That's not um, always going to be that... possible. That depends on your job if you're working in an office maybe. I have to say most yeah. women I know complain about offices being too cold and men too hot because of course our body yeah. temperature. Guess not. It's amazing. Men and women are different. I know. Who knew? Um, the, and and yeah. having different body temperature. My husband would, if he's a northerner. He'd basically like the temperature to be about <laughs> 10 degrees below what I want. He, but he, he was very amused by my hot flushes. He says it's brilliant. He goes, because you don't want the heating on anymore. We're saving a fortune. <laughs> um, here's the thing. My mother's generation, um, and I would say my generation in younger years, we spent a lot of time trying to make sure that we weren't treated as just bundles of hormones. We weren't just, you know, oh, time of the month, love, you know, complaining about periods and things like that, complaining about menopause. We just were getting on with the job in the same way men expect to just get on with the job. Now there seems to be a generation of women, and I'm all in favour of us talking about menopause. Davina McCall is a hero of mine for what she's done to, to talk about, you know, women getting HRT and things like that. But when we make it like a disability, when we tweet it, tweet it as if it's an illness, it's something wrong with us, that everyone else needs to organise around us, I don't think we're doing women any favours. I had an, uh, quite a few months of hot flushes and sleepless nights a few years ago. I went straight on the HRT, basically bullied my GP into giving it to me, as all women should do who are eligible for it. Some women have breast cancer risk. They shouldn't do that. We understand that. Not all women can take it. The vast majority of women can. It's very safe. It's very effective. You should find the right one. It might take a few months. It's an absolute game changer. Now, my, my view is that women should largely stop whinging and get on with it, take the medication if they can, and get on with their jobs. Is that unsisterly of me? Well, some might say so, but I think the thing here is, as I get your point, we've spent a long time, generations in fact, driving for a situation where women are given the same opportunities as their male counterparts. But what we're actually talking about here is not to be given extreme levels of adjustments, but just some recognition that on occasion, women do actually require things to be slightly different. Now, this isn't a poor me situation. This is absolutely about saying on the odd occasion, I am going to need some additional support to get through this. And that is completely reasonable, especially as we are finding more and more women in the workplace. They are in more senior positions. We absolutely have a situation where we have, are in a deficit as far as talent is concerned in this country. We need to keep women in their places of work doing great work. And if that means small adjustments, 
then absolutely, I think they need to be delivered. Well, the and, thing and is, what about, ah, but hold on a minute. It depends whether those small adjustments affect other people, other men or other women in the workplace, and also how much they cost, because... Um, the, 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 even the Equality and Human Rights Commission telling employers they must make allowances for female employees with severe symptoms, like they do with for those with disability, they say they could be guilty of sex discrimination, age discrimination, if they penalise staff for having to take time off, or penalise them, as in you don't get paid because you're not at work, um, or if they ridicule women. OK, fair enough, you're ridiculing a woman for a completely natural thing. I'm sorry, that is harassment. Um, I can ridicule myself and say, I'm, you know, having an old lady heart flushed. It doesn't bother, doesn't bother me, but I'm allowed to say it, they're not. But... Um, yeah. But they, they say this could cost hundreds of thousands to defend claims. Um, and obviously, look, good well, employers don't want to lose good female employees. Of course they don't. We know, as you say, lots of companies are working around this. But is there also not an onus on women? And I know huge numbers of women who say, no, no, I'm not going to take any drugs. Now, I'm, I believe in, you know, body autonomy, whether it's a vaccine for <laughs> COVID or whatever, or, or anything else. It's your choice. But if you choose not to take medication that could relieve your symptoms, if you are eligible for it, which most vast majority of women are, then I would say tough. It's like my husband comes in and says, I've got a terrible headache and I've had it for hours. And I said, have you taken any aspirin or paracetamol? No. You get zero sympathy from me. Right? Mm -hmm. Am I right, ladies? Am I right? Like, if you don't want to take something to make it better, I'm not entirely sure why everyone else has to pander to your needs. OK, so I think, first of all, there's another point in that. I don't think menopause is a disability and I don't think it should be seen as a disability. You said at the beginning it is a natural phase in life and we need to view it like that. The fact that it goes on for over a decade for many women, I'm in my 13th year, and Julia, by the sounds of it, you had a pretty shocking time at the beginning as well. Um, I think we need to look at how we deliver solutions to women. Now, not every woman can take HRT, just as you have said, um, and not every woman finds that HRT is the solution. It doesn't suit every woman. Well, a lot of women and can't get it from their doctor, by the way. A lot of GPs just say, off you go, yeah, and, and you should demand it. Yeah, that, that's the next point. I spent five years trying to get HRT. Um, so it's a situation where it's not one size fits all. As with all of these things, if you do want to take HRT and it is the right solution for you, but unfortunately the one that your GP is offering you, then absolutely, if it's not suiting you, go back to your GP and ask for an alternative solution. Now, there are many out there and the British Menopause Society has lots of advice in the best solutions that are out there and what GPs should be offering patients. Um, and if that is the right solution for you, then absolutely insist that your GP does support you. I'm a very big fan of the insisting. Right Don't ask. I remember I emailed my doctor and said, this is what I want. And please sort the, I'd like it in the I like it in the pharmacy by the end of the day. Thank you very much. I don't understand why we, you know, we pay for the service. That's what we're entitled to. Kate Usher, thank you so much. Really appreciate you joining us. She's a menopause and gender equity consultant. No, I didn't know that job existed either.